Sherman, thanks very much for coming. I really appreciate You're it. Welcome. I'm going to ask you a few questions uh, for the purpose of demonstration, both of your history, then the examination, if you don't mind. So the first thing is, how old are you, may I rudely ask? 68. 68. And are you right or left-handed? Right-handed, left-handed, both. Hand and be dexterous. OK. And which hand do you write with? Right hand. OK. Now, you have a problem that uh, you noticed first about four years ago. Can you tell us how you first noticed and what you first noticed from your own experience? Uh, I thought I got a blast in my eye. Uh, it, it was watering very, very heavy. Always your left eye? The left eye. It was very, very heavy, watery, and I thought maybe something had went into it. So I went to my GP. And well, was it, sorry to cut across you, but was it itchy? Was it sore or uh, red? or what, what? It was just watering all the time. Just watering. And I was rubbing. I had to use a handkerchief up to it. It was just running water all the time. Were you seeing one or two? Uh, sometimes I couldn't see anything. Right, okay, no. because the eyelid was dropping down. It was dropping down and it was very watery. And did you notice then, say for instance, when you're shaving or the like, looking in the mirror basically, uh, that your eyelid had drooped? Uh, not at that stage. When did you first notice that? When the, I went to the hospital and uh, they seen that it was drooped. <coughs> Sorry. And. Uh, now before that, the night before that, I was coming home at night and uh, I was driving the car and car the van in front of me, the, the taillights, one was up in the air and the other was down here. Oh right, so it was double, double yeah, van. It was kind of, the, the eyelid was closing and I didn't realise it, so the taillight went down. I see, so you suddenly were driving, it's quite dangerous obviously. Obviously, yeah. So you came into hospital and then they pointed out what you had begun to uh, become aware of, that you had a droopy eyelid as well. Did you notice that the eyelid drooped more in the morning or the evening? Uh, it drooped at that particular time when I got tired. So towards the end of the day yeah, it would get yes, a bit worse? Yeah. Okay. And was uh, it was very sunny. Or sunny, when you were stre yeah. stretching yourself. Did you notice any changes anywhere else? Did you notice any change with your speech, with your swallow? No. Did you have any weakness in your arms or legs? No. No. So it was always and always has been a droopy eyelid. A droopy eyelid, yeah. Okay. Uh, now, do you mind if we have a little look at that now? Of course. Okay. Can you look at my finger here? And keep your head still, if you don't mind, and look to your left, and to your right, to your left, to your right. Great. Now, I'm going to hold your eyelid up, and I want you to keep it up there. So I'm looking for fatigability. In other words, stretching the muscle or giving it a workout of the eyelid. Remember the eyelid contains levator palpebrae superioris and Muller's muscle supplied by the third nerve and the um, sympathetic chain respectively. So over time you'll see, look at my finger now, that the eyelid has begun to droop even further when you uh, challenge it or uh, check whether or not there's fatigability. Uh, do you see double now at this stage of, um, as I'm stretching it? Do you see one or two? Yeah, two. Two there, okay. Can you point them out to me? That, are they beside each other or on top of each other? Uh, one is fairly solid, the other is kind of... Uh, Just point them out to me, please. There. And the other one is coming down here somewhere. Okay. Can you cover your left eye? Gently. Uh, which one goes away? Uh, the one that was behind. Okay, so the further out one. Okay, that's fine. Take your hand off again, thanks. And now look up for me. So there's full range of eye movements. I'm going to hold your eyelid open as you come down here. So if you look down, I'm going to touch your eyelids now, don't get a fright. And look right down there. Sorry if I'm hurting you. Sorry. Mm. And look all the way over to your left. Am I hurting you? No, that's great. Okay. Do you see one or two? One. All the way out there? One. 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 And up. One. And down. One. And we'll just do this one more time out there. One or two? One. Okay, sometimes people get, in addition to the neuromus thank you, neuromuscular junction uh, deficit for the eyelid, they also get double vision because clearly the muscles of the eyes have neuromuscular junctions as well. And you can get a complete ophthalmoplegia in which the eyes move in no directions or you can get a single muscle being affected. You can get bilateral ptosis, unilateral ptosis, and the differential, differential diagnosis for ptosis is either a problem with the sympathetic chain causing horners, but you'll know quickly it's not by saying, sorry Mr. Chairman, that the pupil is okay, so there's no meiosis. So a partial ptosis is not meiosis, so it's not horners. Then you say, well, could it be a third nerve palsy? Well, it's only a partial ptosis. He's a full range of eye movements and the pupil is equal. Uh, pupil is normal, so therefore it's not a third nerve palsy. 
So then you say, as you come out then, it's a neuromuscular junction. Is it Lambert-Eaton myasthenic syndrome or myasthenia gravis, or is it a myopathy? If it's a myopathy, you see something like the myotonic dystrophy uh, patient we have in a, in a different section of this teaching session, but it's usually bilateral with the myopathy and there are other signs. Um, so there's full range of eye movements, perhaps some weakness of left lateral rectus, sorry, but there's definitely weakness of the left eyelid, which gets worse with um, exerting the muscle called fatigability. Sometimes you, you get um, generalized, so this is ocular myasthenia gravis, due to a problem with the, uh, a, an antibody called the antiacetylcholine receptor antibody, antiacetylcholine receptor antibody, and a, rather, a relatively new antibody called anti-musk, um, capital M-U-S-K antibodies. You do a CT scan of the thorax to look for thymic hyperplasia or, or thymoma, uh, for generalized myasthenia, or indeed even around the eyelids, you do a, an EMG, electromyogram, looking for a jitter or a decremental or decreasing response, the same as the clinical uh, fatigability. Uh, so you do blood tests for antibodies, and then you do a thing called a tensilon test. And in a tensilon test, we'd examine, in Mr. Sherman's case, the eyelid drooping. We put a line in, put them on a cardiac monitor, then give a placebo and have a witness. So you say, give a placebo of water, or normal saline, and you explain to the patient what you're doing, then you inject uh, two mils of a 10, uh, 10 mil uh, uh, vial of um, ventrophonium hydrochloride, which is uh, tensilon, and you give two mils as a test dose, wait a minute, and then you give the other eight mils, and you expect the eyelid to respond within a minute, uh, but then it'll go weak again. So you, you need to be uh, au fait with the tensilon test, the fact you have to do an EMG, the antibodies required, and also that you have to do a CT thorax and uh, looking for thymic hyperplasia and thymoma. Um, sometimes uh, another myasthenic syndrome is called the Lambert-Eaton myasthenic syndrome, which is associated with underlying lung cancer in about 50% of cases, and the antibody there is volt anti-voltage-gated calcium channels. So it's a neuromuscular junction problem we have here. Uh, when you're looking for generalized as opposed to ocular myasthenia, you exercise the muscles, for example, as follows. Can you put your arms up like that for me? And you test the muscle strength, push up against me. Thanks very much. That's great. Now. So what you do then is exercise one arm. Can you do your, uh, move your arm up and down about 15, 20 times, full, like you're pretending to be a bird. I'll, I'll make myself look as stupid as you feel. OK, so you <laughs> fatigue one arm as much as you can. And this is your uh, control arm, if you like. OK, and you put them up like that. And if this is generalized myasthenia, this arm would give way. So you push up. There's a hint of it, but I think, I think I'm exaggerating. In generalized myasthenia, this arm would give away, and this arm would stay firm because you haven't fatigued it. Okay, that's great, thank you.